One of the things I kept thinking about for the first couple of hours of playing The Long Gate was who would reasonably be able to play this game? The Long Gate feels like it requires you to have an interest in physics, maths or engineering in order to be able to play. It requires some specific knowledge that most likely only somebody interested in those topics would actually have. If, right now, you don't know what a logic gate is, then this game would be difficult for you to play. Or, as another example, look at this on the screen and tell me what's happening. If you saw that and didn't think, well that's obviously something counting in binary, then again, I think you would struggle to enjoy this. To some extent, almost all games require some sort of competency in a particular core skill to play them and make progress, whether that be spatial awareness in a soccer band game, multitasking and decision making in an RTS, or just an ability to accurately move a mouse or analogue stick in a first person shooter. If you can't do those things well, those games are going to be harder. But I've never seen a game before where the barrier for entry is as academic as it is in The Long Gate. And the reason for this is that the puzzles in this game are grounded in real-world physics. They cover concepts like logic gates, binary, circuitry, analogue and digital electronics, and even Quantum Computing 101. Yeah, this is a game where to complete it, you will ideally be aware of what quantum computing is. So to answer my own question, the potential market for this game feels like it's pretty much people with a STEM degree, or people who want to get a STEM degree. It is a game, so there are tutorials, but they feel a bit like telling someone what all the pedals, buttons and levers do in a car, and then asking them to drive. They could probably get the thing moving, but it would be clumsy and at least a little bit frustrating. It says in the Steam description, to progress through the game you will intuitively learn the basic principles that form the backbones of each puzzle type, but realistically, I think you probably need to be aware of those principles first. There was a moment in the game when I saw this, and it unlocked a bit of information in the back of my brain that I haven't used in years, and I went, oh, I think that's a flip-flop. But if you had to keep trying to piece together what circuits like this do just from being quickly taught in a video game what individual logic gates do, I imagine that would get quite annoying quite quickly. So, this is not even close to being a game for everyone, but let's keep going anyway. When the game starts, the opening moments are there purely to set the tone, give a sense of scale, and show off the game's visuals. You start in a strange dark tunnel with no clue where you are, so you just keep pushing forward until you reach a door. And when that door opens, it hits you with a scene from the game's starting menu. It's this gorgeous grand space with mysterious markings over a door in the background, and it has my favourite visual trope that always makes me think of Silent Running, which is... Trees on a spaceship. Having read the Steam page, this game's location is actually supposed to be underground caverns, but it's still trees in an artificial sci-fi environment. Throughout the game, the Long Gate supplements its puzzles with similarly neat, interesting and grand visuals. After this opening room, the first puzzle section of the game is eight floors of increasingly complex puzzles based on logic gates and binary, but instead of just eight floors connected by stairs or an elevator, it's an enormous space-age cylindrical chamber where each floor is a disc around a central column. When, or if, you complete the digital stage and move on to the analogue one, it's through an intricate mechanical door into a series of corridors leading off from a small tree in a golden room, and that eventually leads into this large open hall with a curved ceiling and another tree framed in the centre of a circular window at the far end. These locations and visuals give the game a really cool atmosphere and sense of scale. The puzzle pieces that you use, the logic gates, switches, oscilloscopes and whatever, have cool realistic designs that make you want to interact with them, and when you do, it's with a futuristic looking tool that looks like it was plucked straight out of antechamber. The sound design is also solid with things like big satisfying clunks whenever a clock ticks or you push a button. When you solve an entire floor in the logic gate section, it spins your camera over towards these big vase things with a satisfying... ...to show you that the whole floor has powered up. The soundtrack also has some good, mysterious and zen-like pieces that suit the tone of the visuals, 
although if you're in a room for too long, it can become a little bit repetitive. It's a surprisingly high level of polish for an indie game that's aiming for a realistic graphical style. I don't normally care for realism in games, but here in the long gate when it's combined with the real world physics of the puzzles, it gives a strong sense that you are playing as some sort of space age electronic engineer trying to fix or hack their way through an advanced spaceship. Or underground cavern. Whatever. I'm not going to explain many of the game's concepts, but I will give a very short explanation of what a logic gate is. A logic gate is a small device which changes its output either on, one, or off, zero, depending on the inputs it receives. As two examples, an AND gate will only output an ON signal if A AND B are on, whereas an OR gate will output an ON signal if A OR B are on. Simple. I remember when I first learned about logic gates in school, somewhere between the ages of 14 and 16, we would be given diagrams of a chain of logic gates with specific nodes highlighted and asked, based on a specific set of inputs, whether the signal at each node would be on or off. And you know what? They were a lot of fun. They were like solving Sudoku puzzles. And early on in the long gate, you get logic gate puzzles with exactly this concept. You're given a set of inputs, and by moving around some logic gates, you need to get the required outputs. This builds into something slightly more complex, with clocks that tick through ones and zeros, and you need to get your logic gates to still match the correct output at each tick. Or maybe you need to arrange your logic gates to light up particular wires to input a specific number in binary. The second of the game's three sections begins in a similar way, just with puzzles based around analog electronics instead of logic gates. You're given an input signal, and through the use of high and low pass filters and amplifiers, you have to distort that wave into a new desired shape. They're good puzzles that feel rational and tangible because of the design of the pieces you're interacting with and the real physics principles that they're based on. Almost every time I review a puzzle game, I say the same thing about how in a puzzle video game, I think you should be solving partly by doing. This is typically the case in The Long Gate. You get confronted with some sort of layout of machinery and have to spend a bit of time looking at it in detail to figure out what's going on. Clicking buttons and changing settings to see their effects, then going to the output and reverse engineering what needs to happen at each stage of the circuit to get the desired outcome. And as a result, there is a lot of time that you'll spend tracing wires along the floor to see what's linked together and which device affects another. It can be quite slow and involved, but in most of the puzzles it makes you feel really smart when you start off with something that looks like a bit of a mess, and then begin to build up an understanding of how it works and how you can get it to do what you want. But, there is an issue that came up a few times when the satisfying puzzle solving process of breaking down a system and then reverse engineering what you need to do, just wasn't really an option. Like in the logic gate stage, there was this floor, and I'll just play a clip of me following wires around trying to work out what it does. Maybe it's just that I don't know enough, but I simply could not work out what this system was supposed to do, and I had to revert completely to trial and error. And there were a few issues like this in the long gate where it was let down somewhat by frustrating clunkiness. So that puzzle was awkward because it was potentially just too complicated for me, but there were other puzzles that weren't complicated but were still awkward just by having an unclear premise like this box. It looks cool, but I have no idea what the game wanted me to do with it. It looks like three games consoles being shown off in a museum display case. I could see that the box had inputs, but I had to start trying to solve the puzzle of how to activate these inputs without knowing which ones I even wanted to activate. The puzzles were consistently interesting, but the game's lack of clarity around them at times was a problem. One of the first times I got stuck was on a very early level, and it was because I had two AND gates and three inputs. But two AND gates requires four inputs, and I didn't realise that one of these inputs could feed into both gates at the same time. And the reason I didn't know that was because it had never happened before, and it was never described. 
At some point I turned on the game's easy hint mode, not because I needed help with any of the solutions, but just because I occasionally wanted a hint at what the game was even asking for. But usually the hint didn't actually line up with where the confusion was coming from. There were also some other more minor annoyances, like how moving sliders is a pain because for no reason they have so much momentum, making it difficult to stop a slider exactly where you want it without it drifting out of position. The anti-chamber-esque tool on your arm can be programmed to enter ones and zeros into some devices, but to change the number loaded onto your arm you have to walk into a specific room, go up to this grid on the back wall, and move different sliders around into positions corresponding to different numbers. To change eight ones and zeros on a device that you're already holding takes over a minute, and you might have to do this more than once for a puzzle. This grid is admittedly cool, and it is very pretty, but it simply does not work as part of a game. And finally, The Long Gate did at times have the same issue that anyone who's played The Witness will probably understand, in that sometimes the puzzles don't feel like they benefit by being in a first-person 3D game. They are, after all, all circuits and screens, both of which exist in 2D. I liked a lot about The Long Gate. I think it's fascinating that it even exists, a game where the developer has clearly put a huge amount of effort into the gorgeous visuals of a game that's a series of physics and engineering puzzles. This is a game made for exactly someone like me. Someone who loves atmospheric video games, someone that loves puzzle games, and someone that is a maths nerd, and yet I still don't think that it's brilliant. Those clunky moments aren't that common, but when they do crop up they really do slow down your pace of progress and don't let you feel smart in the way that this game should. And even in the good puzzles there are times when it can still be quite a slow process that involves a lot of staring at the floor. But even with those faults this is a game that I did really enjoy and I'm glad I played. I think the premise of using real world physics as the core of the puzzles was a great idea, even if it will heavily reduce the game's potential player base. And even if the 3D design doesn't improve circuit-based puzzles, it did still allow the long gate to have a world that is both gorgeous and heavily atmospheric. This is a very interesting game that I think a lot of people would have a great time with, as long as they know what logic gates are. Thank you for watching. I know that the likelihood is that this is a game that you are probably not going to play, but I hope you enjoyed the video anyway. If you enjoyed the video and you don't follow this channel already, why not subscribe and get notified about all the videos on cool and interesting games that I'll be making in the future. Thanks again for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.